Hi, I'm Bill Tucker from JB Equipment in Howell, Michigan, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to disassemble and then reassemble a relief valve. Today I'm working on a one and one quarter inch relief valve, but I'm also going to be talking about a three quarter inch relief valve. Almost everything is the same except for the size of the two, so most of what I'm talking about you can use on either relief valve as far as how it assembles and, and disassembles. Very first thing you always want to do when you have a relief valve that's been in service is you want to, before you start to repair it, release the spring tension. Otherwise it's going to shoot apart at you when you take the bolts off. So the very first thing is release the spring tension off the spring so there's nothing there anymore. Then you can go ahead and take your wrench and uh, you have a uh, 3 8 bolt with a 9 16 head, so you need a 9 16 um, wrench and you go ahead and loosen all of your bolts and so you can get those out of there. This will take a second here. Now on the big relief valve you've got four bolts and on the small one you have three bolts. But uh, that's how you can differentiate between the two relief valves is whether you have three or four bolts. The big relief valve is uh, good for 75 gallons per minute and up to 2,000 PSI. It's a part number 1285-315. And the small 3 quarter inch relief valve is good for 40 gallons per minute and up to 800 PSI. And that's a 1207-620. Uh, both of these have repair kits you can buy for each of the individual parts. Once you get all the bolts out, you can just go ahead and take the, uh, the housing, relief valve housing off from the spring and set it to the side and then you're going to find that you have a spacer washer on top of the spring and the purpose of that spacer washer is for this top adjusting nut to come down against there so make sure when you reassemble that that goes on top. Next you're going to have your spring and then you're going to have your stem assembly and I'll get back to that in just a minute. Then. After that, you've got your bottom housing, and in that bottom housing, you have a cylinder where your stem assembly goes down inside, and also down at the very bottom of that, you have what is the valve seat. And one thing that I'm always looking at when I repair a relief valve is whether that valve seat has what I call erosion marks across it. Now, if it does, you're going to need to replace it. And what you need to do is you need to go ahead and put this back into your vise and come from the bottom of the uh, relief valve with a punch and you're going to come down and catch the very bottom of that valve seat and you're going to come in with a, a punch and a couple of shots there and it's going to go ahead and come out. Now in this case being a new relief valve the cylinder came out too but this is a tapered seat and it's you pop that out, just release that taper and it will drop out of there. And this is a nice new one so it's got real nice edges but if it was eroded you'd be able to look at it just like a stream eroding. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just reassemble this part of it right back in. Now this is a metal to metal fit so it will be dry, no oil, no uh, Loctite, anything like that. So I always reach in with a paper towel and wipe the area that that valve seat is going to go against and then I wipe the valve seat as well and make sure it's nice and dry nothing on it. Put it in with the seat up taper down in and it's going to go down into the bottom of that housing and then I have a nice little tool that I can sit right down in there and just catch the edge of that um, valve seat tap it in place. You don't want to catch the edges where the, uh, the edge of the seat itself where the valve comes against it but just catch the outside of it. A couple three little taps to kind of seat that thing down in place and then you can go ahead and put your cylinder with its o-ring back on and put it in place. Now what I was talking about there is uh, you have erosion marks across the valve seat and this is the valve assembly and you could have the same thing here if you have erosion marks or say that you have a bad packing cup that is blown or something like that you want to either buy a new stem assembly 
or you can go ahead and disassemble this one and do the parts uh, and get new parts to put into it. Go ahead and take your Allen wrench and put it in there and loosen your valve, uh, the seat set screw out of the uh, valve, back it out, put your stem assembly back in a vise here so you can turn this off. This valve is threaded onto the very end of the valve stem. And then you can just take, they have a nice little hole, you can just take a uh, screwdriver and loosen that up. They always put some Loctite on it so it's nice and hard for me to turn. Now it's not necessary to put Loctite on. You'll want to tighten it very tight though, but not necessary to put Loctite on it. They just do that at the factory. And now you have your valve assembly. You have a washer that is down in the middle of this assembly, which acts as a spacer. And then you have the packing cup that is there, and this is an integral part of your relief valve. Now, I just wanted to assemble that so you can see it. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn right around and reassemble it. So you put that. Uh, packing cup on over the raised lip. You put the washer either direction on this one uh, back on. On the smaller relief valves that washer has a raised ridge and you put that down into the packing but on this one it's just flat on both sides. Then you go ahead and thread your valve back onto your stem assembly like so. Like I said, it's not really necessary to put Loctite on. If you have it available, you can. Put that on there. Go ahead and put your screwdriver through. And go ahead and just tighten it right up. Because it's a metal-to-metal -metal squash fit right there. You're not going to damage anything. Put your set screw back in place. And tighten it up and really the set screw is what's kind of holding that valve on there so that it won't unthread. Tighten that in place and you've got your stem assembly back. Now if, if everything is really bad and rusted you can buy a whole stem assembly or you can buy a, a leaf valve repair kit and that will have the valve and the seat and the packing in it or you can buy just the packing by itself or any part here by itself. Everything is available as an individual part. Now we're just going to go ahead and reassemble this. Get our base back into the vise. We're going to put a little bit of oil on the packing cup here. And there's a couple reasons for the oil. One is it makes it a little easier to get back into the into the assembly itself. But then as well when the uh, relief valve is working, it needs to be able to move up and down and the oil helps give it some lubrication. So just kind of set that down in there, take your fingernail and kind of squish the packing down in until all of a sudden it slides right down in place. Once you've done that, you go ahead and put your spring back on, your top washer on, on top of the spring. And then you can go ahead and put your cover on and install your nuts, or excuse me, your 3 8 bolts back in place, like so. And once you have them all tightened up, you're ready to go. And then at that point, you can go ahead and readjust your pressure uh, nut down in place. Usually you wouldn't do that until you have your machine back running again and then bring it up to the pressure you want to. So that's how you work on either the inch and a quarter or three quarter inch uh, John Bean FMC relief valve. Thank you very much.